Hi, and welcome to this walkthrough for Solo Brass Untamed, which takes the concept from our successful Solo Strings Untamed library into five brass instruments. So you've got tuba, trombone, euphonium, trumpet, and then as a bit of a bonus, we've managed to record four full sets of improvisations on a flugelhorn as well, which sound absolutely great. It's not an instrument you'll hear every day, so it's nice to have that variation to your brass library. If the improvisations are new to you, what they are is sustained long notes, but they've been recorded and performed with like a real human intensity behind them. And they've been recorded at three different dynamic like styles as well. So at the bottom, if you play your keyboard quite gently, you've got these calm, gentle, breathy notes. Play your keyboard a bit harder, you'll get these more lively and lyrical notes. And then if you play your keyboard really hard, you'll get these wild, quite out there, crazy, frenzied notes that sound really, really wild. If you're a fan of uh, Colin Stetson and, and, and players like that who really push how much these instruments can do, like on the trombone especially out of all of them, you'll hear how wild and crazy these get. They're not lyrical passages, they're not phrases or pre-recorded like melodies, they are the note that you're playing so it's still your music, but what it will sound like is an actual player performing those notes for you. So what I'm going to do is take you through all of the instruments uh, individually themselves, so one by one, and then you'll get to see what each of these instruments are capable of on their own. And then lastly, what we'll do is we'll look at the multis that we've recorded, uh, which combine all of the instruments together in one patch of contact with like preset articulations and mic positions and all those kind of things, just to get you some really immediate starting points. And you'll get like inspired just by loading one up and going, oh, okay, now I know what I'm gonna do with my music. So let's go uh, to the first one, which is the tuba. So the tuba, along with all of the other brass instruments, has got four full sets of improvisations, A, B, C and D. So if you play softly on the keyboard, you'll get the calm stuff. And then you play a bit louder on the keyboard. If you play really loudly on your keyboard, so four full sets to choose from. Each one will give you a slightly different variation, or you can layer them up as well. So you've got four tuba players now. And you've got the storms as well. So the storms, if you're new to this again, basically layers up, you need your mod wheel for this or a controller, and it basically layers up all of those layers of improvisation. So you go from one very calm performance at the bottom, adding all of the calm performances, then adding all the lively ones, and then gradually adding all of the wild ones as well. So getting louder and angrier as you increase your mod wheel and getting thicker as well. The sound gets thicker because you're increasing the number of players. At the bottom, you've only got one player if you're only playing one note. And then at the very top, you've got 12 players all playing at once. So it's a really interesting sound and not necessarily achievable live either. It would be quite difficult to get that like that intensity rise out of 12 different tuba players at the same time. Some of these other uh, interesting articulations, we've got a really nice flutter. And then a muted version as well. And then these surges as well, which we've got on all of the instruments and we've uh, sometimes got a soft one like this one. Which is kind of like this unmeasured pulsing effect that we've got the players to do. It's not necessarily timed, so it's, it works with any sort of like beats per minute. You've got a loud version as well. Yeah. 
Next, we've got a vibrato slow and fast. You have got a vibrato control included on the instrument as well, which is simulated, uh, and that can be added to any of the articulations. But when you uh, select the vibrato on the instrument themselves on any of these, you'll get a natural, an actual natural vibrato. <laughs> Last one. Next, we've got multis, multiphonics, which uh, is like a the player singing and humming at the same time as the note, a fifth above the note center. a dronal quality to it. Next we've got soft air which is like the softest uh, sustained note we could possibly achieve on the tuba. So quite breathy in there, you can hear quite a lot of the breath of the player as well. We left all of that in just to give it the, the most natural performance we could. Then we've got the shorts, uh, which sound great on the tuba. So quite soft at the bottom, it's quite a big dynamic range there between sort of like the softer short notes and the louder short notes. And then we've got a muted version as well. Again, quite a lot of dynamic range there. And lastly, we've got these pops, which we recorded on the tuba and the euphonium. And what this is, is the player actually just hitting the end of the mouthpiece using the 12 different valve positions on the instrument. They sound really good just with the spot mic. If you want to hear the actual, the, the pitch center of the note, you've got to put this spot mic all the way up. And then if I turn the reverb off, you'll really be able to hear it. So quite a percussive sound. I'd be interested to hear how people use that in their compositions. I think it could be quite used in quite a variety of ways. So onto the trombone next. So that's the calm stuff at the bottom, playing your keyboard gently. bit more of the lively stuff in the middle and then the wild stuff. Really, really wild and intense. The trombone out of all of the instruments has probably got the biggest dynamic range on these improvisations purely because that's what the instrument's about. You can achieve really soft and gentle, breathy stuff and the really wild stuff. So like I said at the beginning, if you're a fan of people like Colin Stetson, you'll really be able to go to town on this. The improvisations, the wild ones on the trombone probably sound the biggest and the fullest and the angriest that there are. So yeah, really crazy stuff, really good for like those really intense, human, passionate moments like that where they're a bit more upbeat, but also good for kind of like more uh, horrific and, and darker scores as well. So really good, like there's so much intensity behind the wild improvisations on the trombone. It's kind of difficult to get bored. And that's just one set I've been playing there as well. You've got four full sets uh, to choose from. So the storms on the trombone. So 
you can hear the, the massive dynamic range that this instrument's got in the storms. Uh, take you through some others as well. So you've got a long muted note. And then flutter tonguing as well, which sounds great. And then soft air as well. So you can hear loads of breath coming through there. It's such a soft and like breathy sound. It's really nice. A muted version as well. And then these surges as well, the same. We did on the trombone an unmeasured tonguing with a, with a mute as well, which sounds really soft and just sort of like pulsing and bubbling away. It's a little bit the same as the surges, but a much more tamed version. very subtle undulating unmeasured as well so again it fits into quite a lot of different styles of music uh, then we've got these bends as well which on the trombone obviously lends itself really well to pitch bending so these are centered around the note but they just fluctuates in and out you will not find these will ever be in tune for longer than about a second So again, really good for like horror scores and stuff where like the music just needs to be dramatic and unnerving and kind of like there's a sense that something's not quite right. Uh, we've got a muted version as well. And these sound really good stacked up as well. So if I put the tonguing together with, with one of the bends, what you'll find is the pitch center's there and then the bends kind of like weaves its way in and out over the pitch center. Uh, drones on the trombone as well, which is unique to the trombone, is kind of like this didgeridoo sound, really good for just long static underscore. And then multiphonics, the same as the tuba. Again, both of those are really nice for drones and, and just like underscore and texture and, and just something that sits underneath the rest of your composition to build some atmosphere and mood. Uh, then again, specifically to the trombone, we've got these long falls, which if you hold your note, it sustains. And then as you release, the pitch dies away. And then we've got a short fall as well, which just immediately goes down. And then short notes, massive dynamic range in these. And then muted versions as well. And then a bucket mute as well, which sounds great.
So onto the euphonium next, which is a really romantic and soft brass instrument. It's kind of like a bit like a French horn, but like more like in the shape and, and the sound of a tuba. So a really rich and romantic sound that comes out of the euphonium. It's quite like lots of vibrato and those improvisations. Sounds really good when you start stacking them up. So if I pull all four up together. When we were in the studio, I knew this would be like a, an immediate go-to writing tool for me to get those sort of like natural, soft, lyrical passages out. The storms, I'll show you these. So really great tool to work with on the on the storms. Uh, the longs and the vibratos I'll take you through next. And the vibratos, the vibratos on these, I think out of all the instruments are my absolute favorite. fast one. I quite like adding all these together, so the long and the two vibratos together. Really nice, rich sound. Could listen to that all day long. Uh, the surges. And the loud ones. Now together, those are quite nice as well. Onto the shorts. Nice on those, and then the muted version. And also on the euphonium as well, we've recorded these smudges as well, which is a bit like a, a ripped sound. Onto the trumpet, improvisations. So the calm stuff on the trumpet, as you can hear, is quite fragile and brittle uh, at the bottom end in the more lively territory. And 
then the, at the top with the wild stuff, you're going to have a really interesting time. So great. If you really need your cue to just absolutely go for it, hell for leather, the trumpet, top wild improvisations where it's at. Let's load some more up together. And the storms. Uh, let's choose a couple of these others. Alt fingering's really good. So again, like an unmeasured sense, we, when we were recording a lot of these, we didn't want it to have a sense of tempo because then you can apply it to lots of different tempos of music. So the alternative fingering is just basically like changing the valve position all the time to get the same note, but you're getting this like tremolo effect. And we've got soft air and soft mute, like the same we have on a few of the others. So very gentle, very on the edge of like bet halfway between breath and note there, like, you know, really fragile sound to those. Uh, surges as the others. And then the muted version. And then the tonguing the same as on the trombone, it sounds great on the trumpet. And then the muted version as well. So the next two, we've got a half valve and no tuning pipe, which sound really primitive, not necessarily very beautiful or like trumpet-like, uh, but they're really good for sort of like those more visceral and kind of like bass human emotions. Like half valving is where you've got half the, the valve closed. You've either got it open or, or shut completely. And then no tuning pipe, there's actually a pipe removed from the trumpet. So it sounds like a, like a really childlike sound. And then no tuning pipe next, which sounds even more primitive. So again, neither of those sound particularly musical to me. They're not a particularly refined trumpet sound, but I think what they're really good at is those like prehistoric primeval sort of sounds that you need to get. Uh, the shorts next, we've got uh, just a standard short. Uh, muted as well, we've got Harmon Mute. And then this as well, a Cut Mute. So lastly, the flugelhorn, and this is a bit of a bonus. We never planned to record this to begin with, but we had some extra time in the studio. James, the trumpet player said, I'd love to do some stuff on the flugelhorn as well. Can we fit some improvisations in? So we managed to get a full four set of improvisations recorded.
So a really rich sound from the flugelhorn. It's a bit like a trumpet, but a bit more softer and a bit more mellow to my ears. And then the storms on this one as well. So all of those improvisations added together into that Storms articulation just provide you with such an interesting way to create those amazing crescendos and decrescendos that you wouldn't be able to achieve any other way. To listen to one solo calm performance building up to 12 players all playing at once, really wild, crazy improvisations is a really interesting and fun thing to play. What we're going to do now is look at the microphone positions and these microphone positions are the same that they are on the solo strings untamed library so if you're familiar with those these will be really familiar but if you're blending the two as well they'll blend really nicely like the room both sounds very similar on both instruments the close microphone position sounds very similar on both positions so it's really easy it's going to be really easy to mix between these so as before you've got spot close room and gallery and the spot one i've got loaded first i've taken the reverb off so you can hear exactly what the microphone sounds like. There's no processing on any of these videos. Uh, and I've got the, the short trombone articulation loaded as well, just because that's going to do the best job of, of letting you hear what they sound like. So this is the spot microphone position. So very hyped and close up sound. It's not very realistic. It's not like what your natural ear would sound, but if you want a lot of that detail of the sound and a lot of that breath sound, that's the microphone to go for. Uh, close next, which is a stereo pair, a couple of feet in front of the instrument. Then we've got the room, which is what you've been listening to all along. This is what the instrument loads up with. And if you're not sure what to do with microphone mixes or anything like that, just stick with the room and that's going to give you a really natural balanced sound of the whole room. Uh, you can still add reverb to this and it's still going to sound nice. Then lastly, we've got the gallery mics, which are an omni pair placed, placed really high up in the ceiling of the nave, the studio we record these in, and they sound like really wide, really distant sound. So again, like a really natural reverb tail to that, you're getting the full natural reverb sound of the room. And then mixed together, Something like that. So onto the multis last, and this is basically one version of contact, but lots of different instruments loaded into it. And we did this for the solo strings untamed and people loved it. So we've made even more for the brass. We've got 30 over several different categories and they're basically there for an immediate inspiration. So if you just want to load something up, you're not sure what to do, that's what they're there for. Some of them are all of the instruments over the whole keyboard. Some of them are just multiple versions of one instrument loaded into a certain part of the keyboard. So, but they're there just to experiment. You can write with them and use them immediately. Or if you want to, once you've written something with them, you can break out those parts into different versions on the, you know, different tracks and then mix them separately and all those kind of things. But I'll take you through some of them now. There's 30, but I'm not going to show you all of them, I'm just going to show you some of my favourites. So we'll look at the Storms ones first, which is no surprise to anybody, that is all five instruments with their Storms articulation loaded up. Really amazing, very hyped sound, a little bit unrealistic, but some of these will be. They're a bit more experimental and a bit more kind of like designed to kind of like see how far you can push these instruments. Uh, next, we've got four bones, which is, as it suggests, is four trombones loaded up. Really great for the improvisations, each one of the four uh, trombone improvisations loaded in separately and then panned around so you get this big spread of trombones. Uh, Euphonia next which is one of my favourites, it's a really nice uh, instrument to play.
really great, like really rich sound. Yellow Beetle next, which is if you know your movies and you know where my references come from, you'll get this reference. If you know it, stick it in the comments and I'll let you know if you're right. I better not play it exactly right, otherwise I'll probably get a copyright strike from YouTube. Uh, but that's Yellow Beetle. Again, quite a hyped and unrealistic sound, but that's in the experimental category where we've pushed these sounds around to like really sort of like see what we can do with them. Bending time next, which again is like trombone and euphonium together. to Studio Shorts next. And Studio Shorts is no reverb, but all of the uh, short articulations loaded with all their microphone positions blended just nicely. So really great full natural sound of the reverb. That's exactly what it sounds like in that room. Uh, soft Surge is next. Again, just like just really lovely just to hear those just like notes moving in and around and just like never being static, never being still, never getting boring. Really great to play. All the improvisations is exactly what it is. So it's all five of the instruments loaded up, every single one of their improvisations loaded as well. On to Flying Fortress next. Once you hear this, you'll understand why we called it Flying Fortress. So that's trombones all pitch shifted down and really interesting uh, to listen to. Like again, great for, for textures and drones. Uh, let's move on to soft air imp and improvisations. Lastly, we've got a chamber vibrato. So a bit more of a traditional and classical sound to that last one, but still with a natural sense of motion and human performance in those because of the improvisations. That's just a few of the multis, there's 30 to choose from, so I encourage you to open them all up and have a play because that will give you a really good sense of what can be achieved with Solo Brass Untamed. And once you start writing with them is to make your own multis as well, so you've got some tools to just immediately start writing. That's what they're there for, is opening up, sketching out, coming up with ideas, coming up with things that you might not have come up with if you'd have just opened up as an instrument on its own without anything else, anything else around it. What I'd also encourage you to do is just let people breathe every now and again. So when you're writing for brass music is just think about that these people have got to breathe if you want to make it sound realistic. So when you're writing, take a deep breath in, 
write your music, and then when you, you've run out of breath, the chances are the person playing the instrument would have run out of breath as well. The tuba improvisations especially took so much lung capacity that I couldn't believe that we managed to get what we got on the tuba. There was definitely a few moments where he had to sit down, take a few moments on the back of the couch because his head was going a bit light. So yeah, there's some real blood, sweat and tears gone into making all of this. Absolutely amazing players that we've got uh, to do this. So really, really pleased with how it's turned out. And also really pleased with how it blends so nicely with the strings library as well. So they really play nicely off of each other. Uh, that's it, that's all I've got for you. If there's anything I've missed, drop a note in the comments and we'll respond as quickly as I can. But I'm really looking forward, as always, to what you come up with these, because we make these things and kind of like think, yeah, that's how it's gonna be used. And then I hear some stuff back that you guys have made that absolutely blows me away, literally in the case of Solo Brass Untamed. So yeah, really hope you have fun writing with it. And that's it. See you on the next one. Take care, bye-bye.